What's up Techno fam, Chana D or Techno Dad here. And in today's video, we're gonna be checking out the Denon AVR-X3700H and we're gonna get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, before I begin, I wanna give a big shout out and thank you to Dream Media Home Theater for sending this AVR in for me to review. So thank you guys so much truly appreciate it and of course let's not forget to thank my patrons on patreon thank you guys so much for supporting the channel and helping me continue making cool content like this so if you want to become a patron and help the cause make sure you check the link down in the description in the past i have highly recommended the denon x 3600h and now when the 37 was announced i was super excited because i had a good feeling that i would probably be recommending this avr and yeah, I have been. So let's get into it, shall we? The AVR X3700H retails for $1,300 and it processes 11 channels, but powers only nine. And I think this is an AVR that you would grow into if you didn't have space initially for all 11 channels. In the box, we get an Odyssey calibration mic, remote control, batteries, AM and FM antennas, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas, cardboard tripod for calibration mic, quick startup guide along with other documentation, and my favorite, cable labels. I love these things. The X3700H HDMI 2.1 port is capped at 40 gigabits per second, and the HDMI bug does affect this 2020 AVR, meaning you won't be able to pass through a 4K 120 Hz HDR signal from an Xbox Series X through this Denon to a compatible display like my LG E9 OLED. However, I was able to pass through a 4K 120Hz HDR signal from the PS5 through the Marantz SR7015. And since Denon and Marantz are owned by the same parent company, I would imagine they're using the same HDMI chips for these 2020 AV receivers. So due to that logic, I would imagine if you have a PS5, you should be good to go. And if you saw my previous video, the PS5 was only outputting 32 gigabits per second. Let's check out the front panel. On the left, we've got an input selection knob, power button. In the center, we have controls for tuner, zone two and quick select buttons, along with a quarter inch headphone jack, calibration mic input and USB port. On the far right, we have the master volume knob. On the back, there's quite a bit, so let's take this piece by piece. Along the very bottom, we have binding posts for 11 speakers. The middle section starts off with the FM and AM antennas. We have five analog audio inputs plus a phono input. Above that, we have a trigger output, RS-232 connection, remote IR in and out, and a ground screw for the phono stage. Moving right, we have our pre-out section consisting of zone two stereo pre-out and then pre-out for all 11.1 .1 channels the X3700H can process. Now, if you wanna know how to connect an external amp to the X3700H, I made a very detailed video connecting multiple different power amplifiers to an X3600H and it's pretty much exactly the same. So I'll link that video down in the description and with a card up top. Above the pre-outs, we have inputs and outputs for composite and component video. The top row has two Bluetooth antenna connections, four digital audio inputs, two optical, two coaxial, network port, six HDMI 2.0 inputs, one HDMI 2.1 input, and three HDMI outputs. If you're confused on which HDMI output to use, it's the one in the middle with the solid white background. All right, now that we got the unboxing part done, let's jump into the menus and I'm gonna show you how many different ways you can configure Dolby Atmos with the X3700H. All right, so if you're gonna start off with this AV receiver and you have all 11 channels and all that kind of stuff, if you just use the setup wizard, you should be fine. This is more for people that bought this AV receiver and either have a 5.1.2 and they're trying to add some more height channels or they're trying to go to 11 channels, or they started with the 5.1 with this receiver and want to start adding high channels to get those Atmos vibes. So the first thing we need to do is press setup on the Denon remote. Next, scroll down and select speakers, then manual setup, and then go into amp assign. Okay, so what you're seeing on screen is a standard 5.1 setup for this AV receiver. The top line 
Assign mode should be set to 9.1, unless you're trying to buy AMP or Zone 2, which I will not be covering in this video. Let's add two high channels to complete a 5.1.2 setup. Let's say I have two of those Dolby Atmos ceiling bounce style speakers, little speaker toppers or whatever. So I'm gonna scroll down to Dolby SP and change from none to two channels. When you do this, a layout option appears and we only have two options to choose from with a Dolby of firing style speaker, either front Dolby or surround Dolby. Since we added speakers in the amp assign screen, we should back out and go into the speaker config screen. We need to go here to make sure all the speakers either say small or large. If you see any speaker that says none next to it, you will not get any sound from that speaker. So if you added speakers and you're wondering why you're not getting any sound out of them, it's probably because one of them is set to none. All right, let's go back to the amp assign screen and add two more Dolby speakers for a 5.1.4 setup. When we set the Dolby speakers to four, we see them reflected in the picture to the right. As you can see, we have no layout options. These are the only way to set up four Dolby enabled height bouncy speaker situations. Now let's change the four Dolby speakers to standard height channels. So we're gonna change Dolby speaker to none and height speaker to four. Now we will get a lot more layout options when using height channels. We can select four in ceiling or four heights or a combination of height and in ceiling. The best bet is to match your room setup. So for my setup, I'll be using front height and rear height. I'll bounce out and go into speaker config screen to make sure all the speakers are turned on. So we verified all the speakers and it looks like we're good to go. Now let's go back and see what a 7.1 setup looks like. We will have 9.1 up at the top for assign mode. Scroll down to floor and change that from five channel to five channel and SB. SB stands for surround back. You'll see the surround back speakers added to the diagram on the right. Going back out and into speaker config screen, we can see surround back has been added and we have the choice of a single speaker or two speakers for the surround back. Again, mimic your exact setup. So now let's add two height channels to make it a 7.1.2 Atmos setup. Scroll down to height speaker and add two. Scroll through the layouts to mimic the layout of your room. I'll select top middle for this example. And that's it. We now have a 7.1.2 Atmos setup. If you remember, I stated earlier that the X3700H processes 11 channels, but only powers nine. So I'll show you how to set up 7.1.4 using an external amplifier. Go to the top line and change assign mode from 9.1 to 11.1. Now scroll down to height speaker and change it to four channels. Notice how the rear height appear on the diagram to the right with pre on them and a new menu option appears down below called pre out. We can change the pre assignment to the front left and right or the rear left and right height. Those are the only options we have. If we select rear height and then scroll down and select view terminal config, we can see a diagram of the back panel of the AVR. The speaker terminals at the far right, which are the rear heights are grayed out. And you can see in the pre out section above the rear heights on the far right are highlighted. Let's change the pre designation from rear height to front left and right and look at the terminal config screen again. You'll notice the front left and right are grayed out in the speaker section, but they are highlighted in the pre out section. Now, if you wanna power any other channels externally, you do not need to assign them. They're quote unquote always on, except for the fronts or the rear heights. Those need to be designated in this screen. Most of you that have been with the channel know that I'm setting up an 11.3 Atmos system here in the studio. So it'll be a 7.3.4, which will mean I have to add a power amp to get all 11 channels up and running. And I found this uh, 50 watt by four channel little amplifier, little desktop amplifier situation that I'm gonna use with the X3700H to achieve all 11 channels. So I'm actually just gonna run all four high channels off this little guy here. Um, it's got four channels, so uh, might as well. 
You know what I mean? That amplifier cost me 70 to $80 via Amazon. And of course, the speakers that I'm connecting them to, you guys have heard, is the OSD Black 11.3 setup, which consists of 11 three inch speakers. They're cute little guys. And um, the cool part is they only need 25 watts RMS, meaning like any AV receiver should be able to power this whole setup. So definitely subscribe up if you haven't to check out that video. It should be coming out uh, at the end of the week or next week. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm wrapping it up. It's going to be a good one. And it'll go to show that you can have a great 11 channel Atmos setup for $2,000 when you pair up this X3700H with the OSD Black 11.3 speaker system. All right, so we got a lot covered in this video. I'm gonna leave it at that. If you guys have any questions for me about this or anything else, let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on social or email, whichever you like to use. Once again, big shout out to Dream Media Home Theater for sending this over for me to review. Thank you guys so much. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad. I'll see you next time.